Hey everyone, Nubkex here, and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Um, <coughs> oh, I'm choking. Oh, <coughs> oh god. Okay, let's start that again. Uh... Okay, oh god. Hey everyone, Nubkex here and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Today I am bringing you some Artanis gameplay. Artanis is a rather weird hero. He's in a very strange spot in the game. Um, basically, the issue with Artanis, or why he's for the most part been a fairly unpopular hero and fairly difficult to play, is the way that his trait works, because that is just the core of his kit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so his trait, what this does, when he goes below fifty, when he goes below fifty percent health, ah, uh, that that sounded weird for some reason. I don't know why. But he activates a shield, which is pretty nice, pretty straightforward. I think it has a twenty second cooldown. However, each basic attack, it does have a twenty second cooldown. Each basic attack, though, reduces the cooldown of that by four seconds. What this means is that Artanis gets a lot of his power while he's below fifty percent health, and additionally, a lot of that power is going to be determined or based on whether or not he's able to maintain a consistent rate of basic attacks during the fight. So in an ideal situation, Artanis will go in, you know, he'll get, you know, burst it down, but then boom, hits 50% health, the shield pops. But then he just kind of stays on the enemy. They're not able to stun him or kite him or whatever. He stays close to them. He's landing those basic attacks constantly. His shield cooldown keeps going down and down and down. The shield keeps popping over and over again, and he becomes incredibly difficult to kill. He's doing like a moderate amount of sort of sustained damage throughout the fight, and you win the team fight. That's the sort of ideal situation. Now, obviously, the weakness with our, 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 the Artanis is that, well, what happens if you're not in a situation where you can maintain this constant stream of basic attacks? Well, in that sort of situation, it becomes very, very difficult. So he gets very much ha uh, hard countered by heroes that have CC, heroes that can, you know, slow him, stun him, kite him, anything like that. If he is not in a situation where he's able to keep landing basic attacks, he is going to be pretty useless overall. And uh, yeah, that means that, you know, he's got very obvious counterplay. A significant amount of heroes are able to counterplay him. And yeah, it becomes rather difficult to fit him into a draft. And that's why he doesn't see all that much play, really. And, and certainly almost none at pro level play. But anyway, um, <clears throat> right here, also m worth mentioning strategically, we had Sergeant Hammer and Gaslow uh, split pushing bottom which meant that it was very difficult for us to actually take these temples. Now that the enemy team has responded to that split push down bottom and our heroes have spread out a little bit more around the map, we're able to go and start taking these temples. I was looking at my talents, so I eat that to the face, which you don't really want to do, but oh well. Um, yeah, our talent, the rest of his abilities though, so his W is, I think it's called Twin Strike, Twin Blades, I don't know, something like that. Uh, got a very short cooldown. But it basically empowers your next basic attack to make you do a little bit of a charge to an enemy hero, which was something they changed with him since they released him, which is very nice indeed. Um, and it also makes you do like two attacks in short succession. It's pretty awesome. Um, obviously, this gives you a nice way to uh, refresh or get sort of a uh, guaranteed cooldown reduction on your trait, which is pretty useful. Uh, it does like a little bit of damage. You see him just like, I'm Hearthstone here. See you, Murden. <laughs> Murden doesn't even care. He's just like, yeah, see you, Artanis. I'll see you around. See you next time. Bye-bye. Um, his Q then is Blade Dash. This like dashes through heroes. It does a lot more damage on the return dash than the outward dash. Uh, and yeah, you just basically use this for damage. Though you can tweak how you use it with talents. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that because that's what I'm doing in this particular game. Then his E, I think it's called Phase Prism. This got a huge buff from what it used to be back when it first released. I think it now has longer range and travels significantly faster. When it first came out, it was like pretty much impossible to use this. It was kind of sad, but it's much better now than it was. But this makes you swap position with the hero that you hit. You're going to see me using this quite a lot in this game. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's just fantastic. Uh, it's a nice ability. You want to, you know, obviously flip a priority to target that has no escape so for example the enemy team is like a Kael'thas if we flip the Kael'thas into our enemy team he's gonna have a horrible time or we could flip like the uh, Zeratul in force him to blink out or the Thrall in force him to sort of panic and stuff like that it's gonna be pretty useful overall but certainly you need to be a little bit careful with this not to put yourself in a super compromising position you've also seen me use it a couple of times to escape when I'm being ganked like I'll run back behind the enemy team and then swap with them to sort of escape a little bit and it works pretty well overall let me talk a little bit about my talent choices in this particular game. So at level 1 I picked up Reactive Parry, which means whenever we activate our Twin Blades here, uh, we get a stack of block, but it's kind of like the shitty block, it's the 50% block, as opposed to the 75% block. But still, we're up against the Thrall and the Zeratul, both of these have followed through, they both hit pretty hard. Uh, so 
Uh, I'm really not scared of Kael'thas because the talent's going to get later in the game. <coughs> Excuse me. So I decided that this was the best thing. I, by the way, I probably put a blooper at the start of this video. I had some tea before I filmed this video and now it's stuck in my throat. But I'm like a few minutes into it and I don't really want to start again. So we're just going to deal with me coughing every now and again. I hope you don't mind. Um, <laughs> which yeah, reactive parry is okay. I, I don't think it's actually as good as just the baseline block talent, which is kind of sad. But it's pretty decent overall. There you go, I'm flipping the Kael'thas back, just leaving it in a bit of a tough spot. We didn't really have any follow-up there, but you get the idea. Um, <clears throat> my preferred talent at level 1 is Amateur Opponent. What this does is it adds a ton, a ton of bonus damage against non-heroes to your twin strikes here. Your twin blades or your, tw or your twin, I don't know, Eridar twins. Twins, I, I don't know, sexy twins. <laughs> xxx.com um it's like it's it's a nice little talent i particularly like it on sky temple or like battlefield of eternity or garden of terror anything where you have like these big like punching bag type neutral objectives yeah because it just it helps our Tanis like solo them really effectively or do a bunch of wave clear you basically you land a basic attack against a, a melee minion for example as well in the lane <clears throat> then you hit W and you just like explode them. You just like wipe them out. It's a nice little bit of wave clear. It's a pretty useful talent. And I don't think his other level ones are particularly good. So that's what I like going for. But again, in this game, we have a ton of wave clear as is. Um, I said, look, like every every other hero on our team has, you know, substantial amount of wave clear. So I said, ah, you know what? I'll survive with getting some more block and just being able to deal with the two hard hitting basic attack heroes that the enemy team does have. Um, <clears throat> level 4 and level 7. I actually picked a couple of talents that I never picked before in this video. Uh, I wanted to try them out and show you guys how they work. So what I went for in this game, well, I picked the level 4 talent before. I'm not being entirely honest here. I forget what their names are, but again, we will show all the talents at the end of the video so you get the names. But I picked improved range and uh, speed on my blade dash at level 4, which is pretty useful. I think it's 30% more range, 30% more speed. So it makes our Q go further and go faster. Pretty useful. It helps you. It just makes it much easier to land and do a lot more damage. You can see right here, this is a really risky call as well. Let me just mention this too. But I just kind of felt like the enemy team was not really going to expect this or respond to it properly. So uh, yeah, I just made a boss call and hey, looks like it's going to work out actually really well. We got a boss just for free at seven minutes in. So won't complain about that too much. We'll certainly take that. Happy days. Pretty nice. And uh, kind of blind the enemy team as they attempt to engage just to ensure that we are going to make it through this fight, you know, pretty, uh, pretty solidly and pretty safely. Um, but yeah, there you go. Pretty cool. Um, this is a really nice talent. I, I also really like at level four. Uh, actually, let me talk about level, the level 4 and level 7 talents in, in comparison because they synergize together so well. So we have this one here, which is improving the range and the speed. It's going to make it much easier to land the backswing of the blade dash, which does a lot of damage, and just land blade dash in general, which is just nice, more damage, and pretty useful overall. At level 7, I picked up, I think it's called Solarite Reaper, and this makes the original dash, yeah, that's what it's called, I just saw it right there. It makes the first dash of your blade dash do a whole ton more damage. Uh, I think it makes it even do more damage than the back dash. But yeah, normally speaking, blade dash, the first dash does almost nothing. The back dash does a whole ton of damage. Well, not a whole ton, but more damage. Um, this makes the first dash do a lot of damage as well. So both dashes do a lot of damage. And you can see the obvious synergies now between the two of these. Getting more range and speed on our blade dash. And then making the first dash do more damage. So it just makes our blade dash this much more effective like damage cooldown. Much more usable in the team fight. And doing a substantial more uh, amount of damage. As you saw as well. It also adds quite a lot of wave clear too. So that's also quite useful too as well. So I think it's a pretty nice little combo here. The other combos I really like, there's another level 7 talent that I particularly love. I think it's called Psionic Synergy, something like that. What this does is every hero you hit with your blade dash will reduce the cooldown of your shield uh, ability. So, your shielding. I, I forget what that's called as well. I really need to look up these names. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> I'm sure I might get some angry comments about that. But yeah, it's that's a really nice talent too. And that means that... It lets you play a more aggressive Artanis. What you're going to see in this game, or, and you have been seeing and will continue to see in this game, is that I'm going to have to play a more sort of passive Artanis. Like, not going as ham as you could with, like, this other talent build. Because the reason is that, well, you know, you're more dependent on your basic attacks to actually get these shields off and to maintain these shields. 
Um, what you can do, you can be much more aggressive with the psionic synergy talent because you can dive the enemy team. You take a whole bunch of damage. It might be called Templar Zeal. I think Templar Zeal is level 4 talent though. I think psionic synergy is the one that makes your shield more powerful. But yeah, basically you dive into the enemy team. You take a whole bunch of damage. Your shield activates. You then, you save your Q up until that point. You then Q the, through the enemy team which basically like refreshes your shield almost instantly. Your shield pops again and you're pretty pretty nicely off. You can see here, timing my uh, my heroic their ability. I'm too far away to help out my team. Uh, I think Gazza was dead. Yeah, Gazza had died earlier, so I wasn't expecting them to actually take a fight here. They are taking it though, which is why I'm not there. I was expecting them to back off because we were down a hero, but they're still gone in. They actually get a kill out of it. Rhaegar's gonna die too. Arthas, I'm not sure if he dies or not. But yeah, I was sort of timing my suppression pulse there to just deny the enemy team sort of counter engage. I think Arthas does escape. Yeah, he does. Cool. All right. That worked out better than I expected. Um, but yeah, suppression pulse is your uh, one of your heroics here as well. I'll come to that in a second. Um, but yeah, the level four talents I was talking about there, I think it's Templar Zeal. What that does is um, when you're below 50% health, it improves the cooldown reduction of your Q, your blade dash. So this obviously, you can see the synergies here as well. Is that, well, if our blade dash here is refreshing the cooldown on our shield, and, you know, we obviously then want to be using our blade dash below 50% health. Well, then if we get bonus cooldown reduction below 50% health, that's going to be really fantastic. Uh, and that's basically one of the ideas of that particular build, is that... Once you get below half health, you're going to be using your Q to just constantly refresh your shield and you're going to become almost unkillable. It's going to be pretty awesome. One of the reasons I've kind of... I used to always go for that build. I've kind of gone off it a little bit recently since they changed their Tannis and they buffed like his, his baseline kit a little bit. Um, and the reason is that it just opens you up to talents at level 13 and 16 that kind of make you unkillable anyway so you don't necessarily need the the templar zeal psionic synergy combo to make you more unkillable you're going to be unkillable enough as it is so i decided in this particular game to try out this uh ooh, whatever range and damage and then the solarite reaper so just making q more of a dps cooldown as opposed to anything else on just being survivable enough without that as it was and we see how it went so that's basically the theory behind this particular game and you're going to see I'm going to be using Q basically just for damage and nothing else. And it just frees you up to use it whenever you want as well. Anyway, big team fight here. As you can see, when we're able to maintain our basic attacks, we uh, do a substantial amount of damage. Uh, it's been a pretty tough team fight so far. It's been pretty close, but we're kind of dipping and dodging around the place. Muradin re-engages, we get a shield back up, and there you go. Level 13 and 16, I did go for shielding talents, and I highly recommend these. I think they are probably the best talents now on these particular tiers, after they nerfed a couple of the other things. Um, but yeah, you get um, shield something at level <laughs> 13. It basically gives you spell shield whenever you pop your shield, except it's better than spell shield because your shield pops way more often than spell shield does. This makes this is what makes Artana so strong, in my opinion, and makes him a really attractive pick. It makes him like... It makes him really difficult to kill if the enemy team is too stacked with ability damage. He's most vulnerable to basic attacks, um, but with ability damage he can just soak up so much. Because again, every time your shield pops, 50% reduced ability damage for I think it's 4 seconds. It's kind of ridiculous. It's kind of ridiculous. It makes it very difficult for any enemies to actually deal with that and actually kill him. You can see here I was kind of juking to try to do the swappy thing with Thrall. If he went to the right and tried to block me out. Uh, but he kind of backed off. I think he assumed that my allies were coming in. Which is why I was re-engaging kind of. Uh, so he just runs away. Which I'm more than happy with because my team is taking the boss. So happy days. We kind of get a free boss. I don't die. Pretty awesome. Level 16, I pick up seal, uh, Shield Surge, which basically gives you a big extra chunk of uh, shields whenever you pop your shield. And this combo together is part of what makes you unkillable. The final part of the unkillable combo is Force... Uh I think it's Force of Will. Oh, gee, I'll, I'll check all of these talent names for you. But at level 20, you basically pick the, uh, the talent which improves your trait. And what this does is it means that whenever you land a basic attack, instead of getting 4 seconds off the cooldown of your, your trait, off that 20 second refresh on your shield, you now get 6 seconds. So, I mean, if you land one basic attack and then one, like, twin strikes and powered attack, 
congratulations, you just got 18 seconds off your shield. Your shield is, mm, between the time it also took you to actually fire off those attacks, your shield has been completely refreshed. Enjoy. You're going to start kicking ass right here. But you're going to see some sort of the unkillable Artanis going on right here. As you can see, like we just soaked up a whole ton of damage. With the spell shield, we were able to survive. And then with our two shielding talents at 13 and 16, soaking up a whole bunch of extra damage. Pretty nice. As we go during this fight, I'm trying to land more of these to get more shields off again and again. There you go. As you can see, our shields are coming back up again. Pretty nice. I think I actually blade dash for damage through the Kael'thas, uh Flame Strike. So I ended up taking more damage. That was maybe a bit of a mistake. Should have dodged that. But oh well, could have been worse. Uh, and there you go. That, uh, yeah, but it's really nice. As I said, like, once you get these level 13, 16, and 20 talents, getting that psionic synergy earlier on really doesn't matter. So I I'm kind of curious about this particular build I'm going for in this game. I kind of feel like it might be the best one, but I'm interested to try it out. One thing we need to talk about, because I haven't really already, is his heroics. Both of his heroics are really good. You've got pure fire beam. You throw it down in a single target. It does a whole bunch of damage and follows them around. And by a whole bunch of damage, I mean like a ridiculous amount of damage. It is called Force of Will. Okay, I was kind of confused because I know it's the name of uh, Medivh's talent as well. Hmm, interesting. Or ability as well. Um, but yeah, um, one of the things that's put me off pure fire beam recently is that force of will becoming so good. As you can see, I was kind of going, LOL, Kelthus trying to walk in here and almost dies just from gas low turrets alone. Oops. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, our teammates were kind of flaming the gas low, but gas was actually kicking ass in this game. It was kind of funny. It just kind of shows you. I think Sergeant Hammer was the first one to flame, but then she was also defending him at some stage going, you know, actually, hey, he's kind of doing work. So, I mean, there you go. Pretty nice, all things considered. Gaslow OP confirmed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Force of Will is it's really attractive at level 20 now. Uh, whereas the Purifier Beam upgrade level 20 is kind of disgustingly good. It massively increases the viability of it. Purifier Beam is definitely an option. Uh, it's gonna You're going to use it if Suppression Pulse isn't going to be good. And especially if you've got some like sort of CC or lockdown to make it work. Or if they've got like an immobile hero. For example, you pop it on Kael'thas and it kind of ruins his day. Because he can't kind of avoid it too much. Whereas like if you pop it on Li Ming, she just teleports away and she can keep doing her damage anyway. It's not a big deal for her. But like someone like Kael'thas or, um, I don't know, Jaina. Anyone like that. Any sort of mobile hero really doesn't like having Purifier Beam on them. Uh, suppression Pulse is going to be probably the more common option overall. As you've seen me use it a couple of times in this game, it's got a short cooldown. It's a big AoE, it's global as well, by the way. And it blinds enemy heroes for four seconds that get hit by it, which is pretty nice. Um, obviously, you're going to use this if the enemy team has like one or two, probably more so two uh, strong basic attack heroes, including warriors as well. Uh, in this particular game, they do. They have Murden, who's got strong basic attacks if he uh, talents into it at level 16. So probably worth taking this level 10, sort of in anticipation that he might take given the axe. They've got, uh, they have a Thrall, they have a Zeratul, so plenty of heroes here with strong basic attacks. This Suppression Pulse is going to just prevent them from getting too much done. They actually threw out the Void Prison here, so that one wasn't the best Suppression Pulse. But uh, yeah, that would have helped us out anyway. But yeah, it's a nice, nice talent. Uh, can really screw up some heroes and prevent them from getting too much done. So I do recommend it quite a lot. Uh, I don't recommend really the level 20 upgrade for Suppression Pulse, though. It's, it's not fantastic. But there you go. That's actually the game. Uh, we actually won, so pretty nicely done. Well played, Gazlo, wrecking face. And uh, yeah, there's Artanis. Let's talk a little bit as well at the end while we look at the stats and get you those talent names. Let's talk a bit about his strengths and weaknesses and so on. And just some final closing thoughts on when you should play him and if he's good or not. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. He's an interesting hero for sure. There's the damage. You can see we did a decent chunk of damage actually. You know, actually a fair chunk of hero damage. Reactive parry. Lethal alacrity. That's what it's called. Solarite reaper. Suppression pulse. This one is called phase bulwark. Ah, shield surge and force of will. So yeah, it's like that 13. Yeah, I, I do think this is probably the best talent build overall. I, I, I really do like the sort of things that are going on. Personally, my favorite would be amateur opponents at level one. And then the rest of the stuff going through. I personally, ideally, like I, I know a lot of people probably like Artanis into heroes with good basic attacks. I personally much prefer him into mages. Like if they pick double mage, you just laugh and you pick Artanis. Like if they go something like Li Ming, Kael'thas, you just go, ha ha ha, GG guys, pick Artanis as like a second warrior. And you're going to wreck them late in the game because they, they're not going to be able to do anything. You get these, you're going to have spell shield constantly. It's like, how do Li Ming, Kael'thas 
if all of their damage is ability damage, how do they ever kill Artanis? He's just become so difficult to kill because he's just got freaking spell shield constantly. And then this re refreshing shield constantly. It's like they go for burst mages, for two burst mages. It's like you just laugh and say, well, Artanis is like the anti-burst mage because of his trait and those talents preventing him or protecting him from burst. He struggles much more so against, uh, I don't know, someone like... Um, he struggle a bit more against, I don't know, like Raynor or maybe Lunara. Basically heroes that can kite him and maintain just this constant basic attack damage. So he can't protect himself with spell shield. He can't get in range to keep those basic attacks going. And they can kind of melt through him a little bit. So he's certainly vulnerable to that. And he's vulnerable to CC. He's vulnerable to being focused in those sort of situations. And he can have a tough time dealing with that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously then he's he's very vulnerable to being counterpicked in the draft. But I mean, if the enemy team, <laughs> if the enemy team sets them up, themselves up for this, then you're just going to wreck face. Uh, one example of this was if you look back, I believe it was in the preseason when I was playing. Um, it was the, I believe, the 17th placement game of the preseason. Uh, and we were playing with some really good players. However... They weren't the smartest, uh, but basically our team, they picked the damage. I think they did pick Kel'thas, Li Ming, and Abathur. And I was just like, facepalm, oh shit. That's like, all of our damage is super ability based. Like, we do an Abathur clone, and it's like, well, we've got three burst mages. So the enemy team just went LOL, and they picked Artanis and Chen with both of their spell shielding type talents, and they just kind of laughed their way to the to the bank, basically. They just crushed us in that game, because we couldn't kill them. It was like, we couldn't kill them, and they just, like, they could just run in our face, and we would just kind of cry as we tried to kill them and weren't able to, because they had too much uh, sort of ability and burst damage protection. It was an interesting game. But just one example of kind of picking yourself into Artanis' niche and then letting them get the Artanis pick and wrecking him. Uh, but yeah, there you go. He's, he's Overall, he's not a very good hero, though, because he can be countered. Uh, and there's other more consistent options for bruisers that bring more utility. Um, but yeah, I, I personally love him into ability damage heroes where you can pick up the purifier beam and just, just you know, take names, basically. Just do a lot of damage. Um, a lot of his damage, though, does come from that pure fire beam. His base damage isn't fantastic, but it's it's not too shabby. I mean, we did pretty good here in this game, and I'm kind of curious. I wonder how much of that has to do with that lethal alacrity and solarite reaper thing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely going to try him out in some more games because he does seem fairly interesting. Uh, but hopefully, I've given you a bit of an insight into him. I'm certainly not an Artanis expert by any means, and you almost never see him played, so it's hard to kind of get a good grasp of where he's at. But I feel like I'm kind of coming towards a point where I have a fairly good appreciation of where he he is in terms of his gameplay. And as you saw in this game, again against a couple of basic attackers, in fact, uh, we were able to still be pretty effective by taking up reactive parry and the suppression pulse, obviously doing a lot of work. So he's pretty effective. I mean, if they go heavy into basic attacks, the suppression pulse really hurts them. If they go heavy ability damage, the spell, uh, the phase bull work really hurts them. So yeah, I mean, he's a pretty interesting warrior. He's a pretty interesting warrior. Let me know what you think about him. I'm curious to see what you guys think, but give it a like if uh, you enjoyed this video, if you learned a little bit about Artanis. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what other people who've played more Artanis think about this guy and how he does. I do think that he, this is worth mentioning, I think he's actually very powerful in the lower leagues and uh, like bronze or silver or something where, you know, focus fire is worse and you can go kind of more YOLO face and... Uh, then just get tons of value out of his trait because they don't like focus you down and kill you well enough. Uh, and yeah, you're just like running at each other and smacking each other in the face. His trait just becomes super valuable. And there you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, like one of the biggest as well difficulties with Artanis is that once you engage, it's really hard to disengage. And just the nature of his trait getting re cooldown reduction from his basic attacks, it means that with Artanis, it's like pretty much the biggest decision is like, am I going to fight now? And then you say yes, and then you go into the fight, and you're kind of stuck there for the most part. It's like you go in, and you just go ham, and you hope that it works out, and you just play it the best you can. But it's very difficult. It's not like on Murden or something where, you know, you start off the fight and go, yeah, it's not going too great, gonna dwarf toss out. With Artanis, it's like you go in, and you're kind of stuck in there, so do bear that in mind. With this particular build, though, I did try to sort of dip and dodge in a little bit more into the fight. So a bit different from my other Artanis gameplays that I probably have up in the channel. And uh, yeah, there you go, guys. I will see you all next time for more Heroes of the Storm. Bye-bye.